Anyone just start? Um, I understand what you're saying about uh, the meditation, and I'm not sure what the meditation itself entails. Um, I guess I wouldn't know until I went to a class and learned about it. Um, but what I was wondering is sort of a question that's chicken and the egg. Is the meditation itself a road to the happiness and weightlessness that you're talking about, or is it a road to transcendence of ideas? Does it, does it lift a weight so that the ideas are available, or give you a road to the ideas, which in turn makes you happier? Or, let, or Norman asked her, but I just like to say, it's the, it's the egg, and in my book, mind anyway, it opens the door to the big treasury within. So you're going along with a two cycle engine and you get the chance, you get this technique to dive in and add cylinders to that. And in cylinders, they say transcending is a holistic experience, meaning all avenues of life are gonna, are gonna get better. A holistic thing, a field within every human being. Technique opens the door to that. It's very, very beautiful. So just add that to your life. To me, so much suffering and so much negativity, so many problems. It's just this, this thing of transcending. That experience is what's missing. Just get that for yourself. It's so beautiful. Now Norman could talk about the rest. Yeah, no, if I might, <laughs> if I might just say, um, the technique um, can simply be described as um, you're sitting comfortably twice a day, your eyes are closed, you're given a mantra, um, but more important than, or as important as actually being given the mantra, is really being taught how to use the mantra. And it's like anything where you have to get some coaching, like karate, or playing the piano, or playing tennis. You need a coach to kind of show you and get you on the track. But the point is that it is, once you learn, and once you practice, and once you get checked periodically, something that most people, almost everybody, can learn to some degree. Now, in terms of the actual state of transcendence, um, it is, it's said to be the fourth state of consciousness. Okay, now I'm a really a skeptical guy. I was going to say meat and potatoes, but I should probably say tofu and seaweed salad instead. <laughs> I'm a kind of really, you know, you've got to show it to me sort of person. I don't kind of take things on faith. So they say, okay, they're sleeping, waking, dreaming, and now there's a fourth state, transcendence. I say, well, okay, you know, show it to me. So I start to meditate, and then, sure enough, I find I go into the state it's very, very calm, you're very relaxed, you can actually feel physical changes of relaxation in your muscles, in various parts of your body, and at the same time, you're very alert, so you could hear a pin drop, but you're also very calm, but you're not thinking about anything, there's no contents. It's not like, what did I do yesterday, and what am I gonna do later, and in fact, sometimes I might even say, now what day is this? And I realize that I've kind of just lost track of the day, the time, where I am because I'm in this kind of alert state, calm state, different state, which you don't normally get into. Now, once you're in that state, once I'm in that state, and it's different from meditation to meditation and from person to person, but the essential quality is one of great joyfulness and blissfulness. So what you're doing on a regular basis is you're accessing some aspect of yourself that you don't ordinarily get in touch with. And when David says you go into the treasury, it's like you go into some part of yourself that gives you something really good, whether it's reducing your anxiety, whether it's giving you creativity, whether it says, you know, there's something inside you that's really, really worth something. Because if there wasn't, you wouldn't be feeling so good just from diving within. So somehow, through this repeated experience, your feeling of yourself is being affirmed, enriched, provided with all kinds of fuel for whatever it is you want to do in your life. And that's probably the best description that I can give. 
Hello. Uh, you mentioned briefly um, about dreams, but I'm curious if um, you can elaborate a little bit more on that. Um, I'm wondering if you've found a correlation between transcendental meditation and, and the dream life, specifically if your dreams have changed since you've um, started meditating, and also if you found that transcendental meditation um, has helped patients with um, night terrors. Number one is no, I haven't found any change in my dreams. I'd love to tell you that, oh, my dreams have become so wonderful and technicolor and blah, 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 but I'm here to tell you the truth. I haven't noticed any changes, and I haven't had occasion to uh, treat anybody with night terrors who's gone through meditation, so I have to come up empty-handed on that one. Terrific question. Um, what about TM and personality disorders, dissociative disorders? Um, no data yet. There's a lot of evidence that it helps anxiety. There's a lot of evidence that it helps addiction. A lot of evidence that it helps depression, especially depression with anxious or reactive components to it. But the areas that you flag here have yet to be studied. Now, I've read a lot about um, Tibetan Buddhism, and meditation in that has a lot to do with preparing for death. So, how has this changed your relationship with death? Where is that person speaking? Behind the, behind the oh, pillar. okay. Um, well, I've heard stories. It hadn't happened to me yet, but... Um, um, that this thing of fear lifting... This thing of fear lifting is r really real. So all along, I feel you know less afraid. Still, I think I'd be afraid uh, for heavy duty torture and death. Um, but at the same time, um, this this business of being a human being, they say we we um, have a full potential, and that full potential is called enlightenment. And um, this, this, all it needs is unfolding, unfolding by infusing this unity and more and more and more. And this coherence that Norman's talking about, that coherence uh, gets more and more permanent. Higher states of, uh, states of consciousness can come. And in these higher states of consciousness, fear out the window no fear. This is what I've heard and I really believe it. No fear. And they say consciousness is a continuum. That field within is eternal. That's the field they always talk about as never having a beginning. It is and it will be forever. And we can unfold more and more and more of that and that's very good to do while you've got a body and while you've got a technique that's available to do it easily and effortlessly and supremely profoundly. It's very, very good. Now, Mari, she always said, make hay while the sun shines. Here it is. So I'd say I'm, I'm really glad to have this technique.